Thank you so much. And, and now that we know that, I'm going to be introducing our speaker today. We are very, very pleased and uh, privileged to have Professor Manju Chogani, who is the Dean and, of the School of Nursing Sciences and Adult Health in Jamia Hamdad. And um, she is a leader, a trainer, a researcher, and an influential academician with more than 28 years of extensive hands-on experience in the area of maternal and child health and university teaching. Prof Manju initiated the Society of Midwives in India in 2000, as well as the Delhi chapter in 2019. And uh, following that, she launched the Society of Midwives in Rajasthan and Jammu and Kashmir. She is a great inspiration to all the staff members and is presently working as the Dean of Schooling Nursing Sciences inspiring midwifery education and practices, as well as her research, blending her knowledge and expertise in the field of midwifery. And she is going to be speaking to us today and sharing the results of a study where she assessed the practices adopted regarding respectful maternity care by health professionals in labor rooms of selected hospitals in New Delhi, India. So thank you very much, Mangju, for joining us today. And thank you to everybody who is, has joined us today as well. And I'm going to be handing over to you so that you're able to start the presentation. That it is the experience of the woman which matters, whether positive or negative. And despite of lot of improvements in access to quality services is not guaranteed for many, especially in developing countries like India. Even when services are available, Care may be compromised by social, ethnic, and cultural barriers and unwelcoming reception at the healthcare facility and lack of privacy and information for the client and disrespect and abuse. So keeping uh, these in mind, uh, we worked on the um, various uh, like categories of uh, disrespect and it is the failure to meet professional standards of care due to lack of informed consent, lack of confidentiality, unduly rough or painful examinations without giving any explanation to them, refusal to provide pain relief, performance of unconsented procedures, and then neglect, abandonment, or long delays because of maybe long queues or uh, shortage of staff, whatever may be the reason, but this is the uh, one of the factor. And then absent skilled attendant at delivery. And then um, going into what is the respectful maternity care, if we look at the just a definition, it is a universal human right due to every woman in every health system. Could it be the maternal, it could be maternal health, family planning or abortion services. And in short, if I have to explain in very simple words, it is the respect for women's rights, choices and dignity. It is care that is kind, competent and improves outcomes. It care, it is the care that does no harm. It is care that is culturally sensitive and valued by the woman and her community. So uh, we took this charter, this is Respectful Maternity Care Charter developed by White Ribbon Alliance, where we have a categories of disrespect, uh, seven categories and the corresponding rights which women should have. Uh, first one is the physical abuse and we expect freedom from harm and ill treatment. The second category is non-consented care where we expect right to information, informed consent and refusal and respect for choices and preferences, including the right to companionship of voice uh, choice wherever possible. Then non-confidential care. So we expect confidentiality and privacy. Fourth category is non-dignified care, including verbal abuse and dignity and respect is expected. Then discrimination based on specific attributes where we expect equality, freedom from discrimination, equitable care. Then abandonment or denial of care where we expect right to timely health care and to the highest available level, level of health. Then detention in facilities where we expect liberty 
autonomy, self-determination, and freedom from coercion. And in going through all these uh, categories, this was the charter uh, which uh, was developed, and it was translated into three languages also, this charter. And White Ribbon Alliance uh, India uh, works for safe motherhood. And it is an alliance of maternal health advocates committed to reducing maternal mortality and morbidity in India. The White Ribbon Alliance functions as an informal coalition, not registered, open to all stakeholders, interested groups, and individuals. There are more than 1,800 members and five state alliances. It is affiliated to the White Ribbon Alliance uh, um, International. And the headquarter is in Washington, D.C., as you all must be aware of. In uh, 2011, White Ribbon uh, Alliance launched a global campaign to promote clear standards of respectful maternity care that is rooted in international human rights. Working along with other organizations produced the RMC Charter, the Universal Rights of Childbearing Women. It affirms maternal health rights as basic human right, rights grounded in international declarations, endorsed by WHO, the International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics, and International Confederation of Midwives. About 85 Indian organizations have endorsed the charter so far. It is available in Hindi, English, Uriya, and Assamese. And uh, the study, this study was done because when we were working on this charter, we realized that there is not a, uh, I would not say single study, but I would say that there is a very, very little work done in the field of respectful maternity care. And uh, it is very, very important that human beings are treated in a humane manner and they provide uh, the care in, um, with a respectful manner empathetic manner and all nursing officers and doctors should be uh, should be following this uh, so that the woman's experience of child bearing becomes a memorable one rather than a traumatic one and they should provide uh, the care with respect as the providers are looked upon as the delivers of quality care coupled with emotions and sentiments hence the researcher felt the need to assess the practices adopted by the health professionals with regard to respectful maternity care in the labor room of three hospitals in New Delhi. And uh, the objectives of the study were to assess the practices adopted by the health professionals in regard to respectful maternity care working in labor room, and then later to seek the relationship between the number of health professionals and respectful maternity care. Because most of the people used to say that because the number of cases are too many so they are not able to follow the the protocol or the standards of uh, the respectful maternity care so we wanted to check this relationship as well and the research methodology was the approach adopted was quantitative research approach and the design was descriptive survey research design setting was labor room of three selected hospitals of new delhi and population was health professionals working in the labor room of selected hospitals of new delhi sample size uh, was 63 health professionals uh, which included registered uh, obstetricians and gynecologists and nurse midwives working in labor room of selected three hospitals and the purposive sampling technique was adopted to select uh, the health professionals in the labor room. And the ethical permission was sought from the Institutional Review Board of Jamia Hamdar. And the data collection tools were observation checklist, which consisted of two parts. Uh, first one was demographic profile of health professionals. And the second one was clinical profile of the mothers. And there was the second uh, part was observation checklist based on respectful maternity care charter and uh, the seven categories which uh, which i showed you it was based on that charter the checklist and the content validity of tool was sought from the seven experts in the field of obstetrical and gynecological nursing 
to check the content, relevance, visibility, organization, clarity, and suggestions from them were incorporated into this. And the reliability was worked out uh, by adopting the interrater. <coughs> sorry, the reliability in the current research, it was 0.96. The pilot study was conducted by observing five health professionals uh, in the labor room and the uh, the blueprint of rmc charter was like this uh, there were items in each category physical harm and ill treatment there were 11 items right to information again 11 items confidentiality privacy seven dignity and respect nine items provision of equitable care free of discrimination five left without care five items detained or confined against will four items total there were 52 items and this was uh, used um, to collect the data and <coughs> the hospitals uh, this slide presents the findings related to background data of the hospitals because these three hospitals which were selected um, there we saw the number of labor tables, total number of deliveries observed, uh, number of health professionals, and the number of days uh, they, these uh, cases were observed. So in the hospital A, the number of labor tables were four and the number of deliveries observed were 40. Health professionals working there in the category of uh, gynecologist and the nurse midwives were 21. Number of days observed in all three hospitals were eight days. Uh, hospital B had again four tables and the number of deliveries were maximum in this. Observed 56 and the health professionals 24. Uh, in third hospital, there were only two tables and 33 deliveries were observed and 18 health professionals were, uh, were involved in the study. And then the section two is findings related to practices adopted by the health professionals with regard to respectful maternity care. This section is divided into two parts. First part is findings related to the respectful maternity care performance standards of health professionals during labor and delivery in three hospitals. And the part two is findings related to respectful maternity care in three hospitals. And if we look at the uh, modified mean and modified mean and rank order of respectful maternity care performance standards of health professionals in three hospitals, uh, uh, we could see very clearly that we have done the ranking also. So the most commonest one is the they left without care. That is uh, ranking number one. Number two is right to information and consent and preferred choices. And the last one is provision of equitable care free of discrimination. So uh, and uh, you can see the uh, mean and modified mean. Um, then uh, this is just the bar diagram showing the same findings of that table into the bar diagram, which also shows that the maximum was in the area that they are left without care. Then uh, the next one is respectful maternity care performance standards of health professionals working in three hospitals by the number of times the behavior was observed, uh, the similar behavior. Like for example, physical harm or ill treatment in hospital A was seen or observed 424 times and in hospital B 247 times and total if we take it as 805 times that physical harm or ill treatment was observed and similarly the right to information or informed consent and preferred choices in hospital C it was observed for 151 times and uh, you can you can notice that the um, detained or confined uh, against will was observed 53 times um, in hospital A, 50, 48 times in hospital B, and 34 times in hospital C. So uh, it is a 
uh, highest one uh, was the category one that is physical harm or ill treatment and the least was in provision of equitable care free of discrimination that is 22 times total and then these are the findings where we worked out to see the mm, relationship and in this we saw that the possible range of obtained scores in all it was 0 to 52 and the uh, range of scores obtained was 20 to 32 uh, with the mean 29.62 highest mean in hospital A and the standard deviation lowest standard deviation was in hospital C and uh, the next uh, findings are the uh, relationship between the two or uh, whether the number of uh, the uh, uh, respectful maternity care and the number of healthcare professionals have any relationship or not. Um, in this, um, the uh, scores were worked out in hospital A, B and C. And from the scores, you can see that uh, the Fisher exact uh, test was uh, applied in this. And this indicates that there was a significant relationship uh, score of respectful maternity care with the number of health professionals. There was a relationship because when there are less number of health professionals and more number of cases to attend, you know, the standards or the protocols which were followed uh, were not that good. So um, we, compared it with uh, many other studies also. And the study findings are largely consistent with those from recent international studies of patient uh, mistreatment in maternity services, both in terms of the extent of abuse they describe and the triggers for abuse they identify. And another study uh, was conducted in East and South Africa by Heather A. Rosen, Pamela, uh, Lenem and Catherine, the findings of uh, 2,164 labor and delivery observations revealed that women overall were treated with dignity and in a supportive manner by providers, but many women experienced poor interactions with providers and were not well informed about their care. The findings of the study is in line with the present study where there was a significant physical and verbal uh, abuse was observed. And the implication of the study was in the field of nursing practice, education, administration, and research. And if we take in nursing practice, it is of paramount importance that human beings should be treated in human manner, uh, including doctors and nurses, um, so that the woman's experience of childbearing becomes a memorable one rather than a traumatic one. They should be given care with respect as providers are looked upon as a delivers of quality care coupled with emotions and sentiments. And in nursing education, it should be included as a um, chapter from the beginning itself because this is a um, behavior which they have to pick up from the beginning itself. If after coming out of their course, we expect them to suddenly give respectful maternity care and we have not sensitized them um, uh, on this aspect during their coursework, uh, then it cannot happen over a day. Uh, so we need to start it from the beginning itself to the nursing students and uh, so that they take it as uh, as a part of their um, their development and behavior and attitudes from the beginning itself and health personnel should make the woman aware regarding her rights during childbearing period because once they are aware of their rights then they can also demand if they're not aware of it it is not possible many times that they're not asking for what is required then student nurses should be trained to deal with the patient politely, empathetically, without discrimination, and not just providing them with mechanical care. And the respectful maternity care charter can be included in the syllabus 
as a charter which they all must be aware of then in nursing administration we should make it as a part of in service education program because the nurses who have already passed out and it is not uh, taught in their syllabus during their course the, during their pre service period so we can start with the in service education and start sensitizing people on this aspect and strategies and newer approaches can be incorporated for the inclusion of respectful maternity care in continuing nursing education programs and there is requirement or the need of a lot of research to be undertaken in this field because still the documentation in this field is very little available in india and further studies can be done to assess the respectful maternity care in many hospitals over the period of uh, longer duration uh, to generalize the findings and sensitize the health professionals uh, regarding rmc and uh, if i say the limitation of the study because the time period was uh, limited um, uh, and because of that only the morning shift uh, during morning shift the observations were made and the data collected was based on observation made by the investigator as the study might have had hawthorn effect if the observations were noted down in front of the health professionals so it was done without uh, informing except the hod was informed and permission was sought and um, based on this the recommendations are that uh, further research to explore the effectiveness of respectful maternity care um, thereby improving the institutional uh, deliveries and the quality of care and all hospitals should adopt respectful maternity care practices and more knowledge to be provided to the health professionals about women's right during childbearing as for the cognitive development of the fetus and pregnancy outcome is important for mother as well as family the respectful maternity care charter can be displayed in the labor rooms of all hospitals so as the health professionals and women be aware of um, their rights during the childbirth and many hospitals in india have already adopted this that they have displayed this charter in different languages um, wherever they are displaying uh, like i said it is already translated in four languages and it is also included respectful maternity care is also included in our ministry guidelines uh, the, which is called lakshya through this the training is given to all healthcare providers including doctors nurses and other health workers uh, to sensitize them on this and a lot of progress have been made after this study actually and to conclude i would say that the study identified a uh, suffering of women physically as well as emotional uh, breakthrough during labor uh, there were many women who said that uh, like 100% women when i asked them they said that they uh, were not greeted at all then uh, they were not encouraged to ask questions they wanted to ask many questions they had those queries but they were not uh, uh, they were not allowed i would not say but they were not able to ask the questions and uh, privacy was also a issue which was uh, which was mentioned by them specifically and uh, insufficient communication and information sharing by providers as well as delay in care and abandonment of laboring women were the de deficiencies in respectful maternity care and failure to adopt a patient centered approach and lack of health system resources are contributing structural factors and um, that's all this was the references i used and uh, thank you so much uh, remember that disrespect and abuse during maternity care are violations of a woman's basic human rights so uh, this is all about uh, my presentation and look forward to have questions from you all thank you thank you so much manju for your wonderful presentation you brought up so many important points about respectful care in maternity and um, it was really wonderful to see the studies and research that you have done i see there are some comments um from from the delegates and um 
And one of the questions is, is there a plan to translate into other languages? Um, the charter or the findings? Um, she didn't mention it. So deeper, maybe if you just, the charter. Yeah, charter. Charter uh, is, uh, they are free to uh, translate into different languages. Actually, we have um, chapters uh, of White Ribbon Alliance in states like Assam, Orissa. So they are taking initiative and translating it into these languages. So whosoever wants to use this uh, English charter, they can translate it into their own languages. And it would be very good that if this charter in their local language is put up outside the hospital health facility so that people are aware of it and they can demand it. Wonderful, that's so good to hear. And then we had another question um, asking if the hospital administration would be a, uh, wanting to make any changes to the practice in their hospitals as a result of the study. Uh, I would say that not exactly due to the res uh, as a result of study, but yes, because this study was used for advocacy with ministry also, and there the changes have taken place. So I'm happy that the study was not very big, but has made change in through advocacy at ministry and the guidelines uh, in in the ministry guidelines lakshya which i mentioned it has been included as one of the chapter in that and in the training of all healthcare professionals in labor rooms and in maternity area people are uh, taught this uh, whole concept of respectful maternity care that privacy information not detaining them uh, against their wishes and all that is being done now in India. And I'm so happy and glad to inform you that uh, White Ribbon Alliance uh, was doing this advocacy continuously uh, with the ministry and our health ministry, uh, that is maternal health uh, division, has uh, realized it and everyone is now working on this. That's absolutely wonderful to hear. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for your detailed answer. Are there any other questions that anybody would like to pose to Dr. Manju? We have another five minutes before we will be closing this room and um, moving on to the next presentation. And uh, Deepa is asking if there's public access to the, to the Luxia guidelines and if you could maybe share that with us. Yeah, it is there on the website of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. If you go into the publication se section and if there is any difficulty, Deepa, my email address, you can write to me. I can forward it to you. It is manjuchogani at the rate gmail.com. And what we'll try and do is um, make that available. Remember that these presentations yeah. are being recorded and there will be notes. So and um, we will try and make that available to everybody so that they're able to find those um, links. Details. Yeah, that and, would be and the links. So um, I'm just going to be switching off record for the moment. Yeah. And 